Okay, good morning everyone. So we're gonna <coughs> start calculating this beam, reinforced concrete beam, with a 7 meter span. Uh, support we have 0.4 wide on some support, simply reinforced. And it is loaded by this uh, self weight. Uh, we're gonna calculate this uh, according to the British standards and the Eurocode 2. Uh, the section we're gonna consider will be the total depth will be 0.69 that I get uh, from dividing the 7 meters by 10.5 I, I already know it will be uh, singly reinforced I'm giving away already this information could be doubly but that will will solve in another video on this single reinforced it will be like this H069 for B <coughs> I estimate it's around 0.5 of the H so give me I was uh, hoping to do this with uh, 350 millimeters so it's 0.35 meters we're gonna use uh, uh, for concrete uh, C32 for strength uh, for rebars we're gonna use the S500 FYK so we know the B 35 the H 69 from D we're gonna consider that uh, we have a aggregate that has a tops uh, 25 uh, millimeters. So, and uh, so we're gonna give a, a clean cover. Uh, of concrete of uh, 45 millimeters here on the bottom, and uh, for stirrups. Uh, I want to use stirrups of 8 on the beam if they are needed and uh, uh, I'm thinking on uh, using a diameter for the main reinforcement of 32 millimeters so <clears throat> uh, this is my base for calculation if it's not enough then later on I can change the dimensions and uh, what I'm estimating but estimating these dimensions will allow me to get uh, the effective depth that will be the H subtracted by the clean cover subtracted by the stirrup it is around of course 8 millimeters and subtracted half of the main diameter and I think this will give me uh, effective depth uh, that will be close to the reality usually uh, I start by uh, by trial with a 25 diameter tops and uh, give me a good result but we're gonna put this already 32 for the main reinforcement so we start to have to check uh, two things first we have to check the uh, and calculate for the bending moments at ultimate limit state and second at ultimate limit state we have to calculate and check for shear so starting the uh, ultimate limit state we have to factor the loads that we have the self weight will be so the wide zero uh, of course all these calculations here the main uh, equations they are all in newtons and millimeters so if someone that doesn't like to work with square centimeters uh, square meters and can always try to calculate everything on 
newtons and millimeters and then they don't need to use the conversions of the units we can get results always on this uh, but I like uh, to work sometimes on square centimeters uh, and centimeters and, and times on meters so. but who doesn't uh, want to have the, this can always work with newtons and millimeters most of the formulas and equations will work with newtons uh, and millimeters so working here with how I usually do we start by factoring the loads that will be according to the euro code 135 dot permanent load plus 1.5 multiplier by the variable load this will give us the factory uh, in reality is the UDL UDL it will be this permanent uh, load the permanent load here and the variable load and we are considering so for self weight 035 of the concrete wide multiplied by the height that is uh, 0 0.69 meters multiply this uh, by 25 of reinforced concrete they give you 6.037 km per square meters so for finish will be considered 3371 variable load I want to consider 23 kilometers per square meters on this beam so this will be the loads so on these loads of the beams we consider the load of the self weight of the beam in the calculation we don't forget this otherwise then the calculation will be wrong never forget the self weight of the structure so moving on we get from this multiplication 135 multiplied by 6.03 uh, plus 33.71 plus 1.5 multiplied by the variable load 23 give us 88.16 kilometers per square meter so this is our UDL or the factory load uh, now is a simply supported beam we are considering it simply supported means so uh, the moment this factory moment uh, the, that in the euro code they call it MED will be the factory load the UDL multiplied by the span square over 8 so here it's simply 88.16 multiplied by the span 7 over 2 divided by 8 give you 539.98 kilometers per square meter so the fact the factor moment factor moment that we calculate is the the same what do you call the MED for main reinforcement so this will be good this bending moment will be for calculating the bending moment and for that in the euro code we have this form k equal to ma ed divided by b multiplied by d square multiplied by fck and we can put here for example we have this table uh, this main reinforcement will be on the bottom of the beam as it's where the moment will be positive on the bottom the main it's 539 the k that we calculated from this it's like 539 uh, <coughs> multiply uh, divided by 0.35 multiplied by 0. Point, the d give, was given as was 0. 0.621 uh, okay multiply by fck in our case fck is 32 okay this all we put it in the same unit so 
and uh, will give us 0 0.125 and we have this limit for k limit 0 0.167 and since what we calculate 0 0.25 is less than 0 0.167 it means it's a beam that is singly reinforced so its main reinforcement will be on the bottom of the beam here on the bottom as we see so we don't need to focus it is not a double we will not have a much to focus on calculations on the top so for this there is another equation to calculate now the lever arm that is z and this equation we can consider it in the euro code this lever arm beam equal to d is this one multiplied by 0 0.5 plus root of uh, 0 0.25 less 0 0.882 divided by k and this equation in reality has to be smaller than uh, 0 0.95 of d so whatever is smaller will be the z the lever arm after calculating we know the k 0 0.25 we just replace it in the equation we get it a lever arm 0 0.543 and to calculate the main reinforcement we have this equation that is equal to the factor moment divided by 0 0.87 fyk multiplied by the lever arm that's why we calculated the lever arm so after replacing all the values that we get before we reach to the i'm calculating in square centimeters per meter so it gave me 2286 square centimeters per meter and for that so we need to find the rebars that we need I found here to use on the bottom so three rebars of 32 because if we try to use four it's too much already and if we try to use less than the 3, 16 is less than what we calculate. 16 square centimeters is less than we calculate. It's not enough. So on the bottom, we need at least 3 of 32. And since we adopted 32, forming rebar on the beginning of our calculations, that's why I'm looking for that here. I could try to do the same, then I change just will change the effective depth, depth. Uh, if I change it 32 to calculate it with 25. So. And since these uh, rebars provided 24 is bigger than this, we are fine. And for this, we have still to check the minimum reinforcement that is in the euro code. And for that, there is this equation to see if it is uh, there the main reinforcement here has to be between these two values the maximum and the minimum and for the minimum we have that it has to be it will be the maximum of these two minimum values one is 0 0.26 multiplied by FCTM multiplied by the base multiply it by D divided by FYK and the other value is simply 0 0.0013 multiply by B multiply it by D so from calculating these two values uh, the maximum between this one and this one 
the result of then what is mass is 3.41 so the minimum reinforcement that we can put there whatever is the case is 3.41 square centimeters per meter but we calculated 24 that is more so we are safe it's okay and for this minimum reinforcement we for example later on if we need to put it in some place two rebars of 16 give us 4.02 square centimeter little less more than this so it's okay but if we try to put 12 is less than what we calculated for minimum reinforcement so it's 16 two rebars of 16 this fctm is on tables because it's uh, if you go there we can calculate it or go to the table c32 we have 30 the fctm give us 2.9 here but what we are using is 32 so there is a equation for this that is simply 0.3 multiplied by the uh, root of the fck uh, when we calculate that um, it's basically this equation is 0 0.3 multiplied by uh, the fck um, over if I'm not mistaken this a uh, Let me just check here. It's a two third elevated two third. So you can make this root. And what we get for FCTM of this concrete is 3.023. So it's what we use on this e equation here. Okay, for FCTM. Okay, now we have the bottom, the main reinforcement, and on the supports, we need to put on top some uh, minimum reinforcement too. I like to say that this will minimum reinforcement on the supports that uh, according to the code we have to put uh, should have at least uh, uh, one third of the span one side and the other side one third of the span the length for this um, reinforcement that we're gonna add uh, close to the supports on the top for reinforcement and this since there is a, a, a equation that uh, says how much it has to be this main reinforcement the, this, this minimum reinforcement on the top of the supports it will be this one it will be the maximum between these two values the minimum still that we, we already calculated or 15% of the main reinforcement That is on mid span. Whatever is the bigger is what we use. We have calculated one and then simply calculating one was this one 3.41, 3.41, and the other 15% of the main reinforcement. That was this one, it was 3.42, so this one was bigger, this is why we use it here, 3.429. So knowing this value for the top reinforcement, one side and to the other side, we can get the rebars that we need. 
and this is close to the minimum that we calculate. So let's test two rebars of 16. Give us a steel of 4.02 square centimeters. It's bigger than 3.42, so it's okay. If we, we have to use the minimum here on the top too, because it will be the minimum even for use like hangers. So we'll end up using later on. We'll need to extend this minimum to the other side since if it is necessary to have stirrups. So we'll have to use here at least minimum for hangers. And in this case, this is already the minimum value because it's 342, here is 341. Yeah. And uh, when we round, it's 342, is the same. So, in reality, if later on we have to use stirrups, we have, we'll put the minimum stirrups too, all along, and we'll extend this on the top. So, 2 of 16, if we put the 12, diameter of 12, we give 2.26, is not enough. So, we'll have to use the 16 that is uh, on our market. There are markets that have diameters of 14. Then we see if we, it's enough for the quantity that we need. Here, what we have is the diameter of 16. Okay, 16, 16. One side, we use two diameters of 16, that in the UK they usually say 2H of 16. I will just say two diameters of 16 millimeters, one side and the other, and it will be initial this length. It will increase, since it's the minimum, it can increase to one point to the other to put the steer is later is necessary so moving on we have now the main reinforcement and the reinforcement on, the main reinforcement on the bottom and the reinforcement on the top of the supports the bending moment and this longitudinal reinforcement is calculated we go to now to check the shear at the ultimate limit state from what we calculated. And this ultimate limit state is basically the shear factor, is the same thing. It will be the UDL or the factory loads multiplied by L divided over 2. Over two. And that gives us 308.56 kilonewtons. Okay. So according to the code, we need to check if it will be needed reinforcement for shear what it means is the links on the vertical and since this is horizontal this being to be stirrups and for that there is this equation on the euro code that says the shear has to be less or equal than the resistance shear the VRDC. This VRDC will be C, will be this equation, this first equation, and uh, it will be the maximum between this first equation and the other one, that is the minimum, 0 0.035 K over <coughs> elevated to 3 by 2. Okay, in this case we don't have uh, press stress, so in this side of the equation K1 by the tension of press stress it's zero, we don't have it, so simply it will be become zero. The rest is all calculated, so when the, the CRD is equal to 0, 0,18 divided by a safety factor of the concrete, that is is it okay, 1.5 what will give us so this 0 0.12 the k is simply calculated by this other formula from your code 
equal to 1, root of 200 divided by d, ohm limits, and has to be less or equal to 2. <coughs> okay, calculating this k, ohm millimeters give us 156, that is less than 2. So we are okay. If not, we have to adopt the 2 as the value. <coughs> now, here, this ratio, the rho L or rho 1, it's from this equation, the main reinforcement divided by B multiplied by D, the effective depth, and has to be less or equal to 0 0.02. So this main reinforcement that we are calculating for the resistance, for the shear resistance, it's uh, that is in, in this equation. It's on the supports, and on the supports we know these rebars here of the bottom. When they reach the supports, they only need to be 50% here, near the supports. So 50% means they are half of what we calculated. They will be half of 3 bars, diameter of 32. So we can cut about 50%. So this area of steel here, we can cut 50%. In this row, this is why I divided I divided here the main reinforcement by two on the equation. It was uh, 22.86. I divided by two. Uh, actually, used the one I used the other one. The one that I'm providing 24.13 divided by 2 because on the support you only need half. So, assuming I'll have this detail in, then on the drawings, and I will only put uh, half or consider this and divided by uh, B that is 0 0.35 multiplied by D that is 0 0.6. 62 1 uh, where it is here this ratio gave me 0 0.00 this ratio gave me 0 0.0055 that is less than 0 0.02 so we are okay again <coughs> So we replace all, all these values we're gonna, on this equation, and what we get it's 106 kilonewtons. And the other equation that we need to check, 0 0.035, we replace all the values. We know 0. 0 0.035 multiplied by k that is 1.56 divided by 3 divided by 2 multiplied by fck that is the root of fck uh, that is 32 plus k1 that could be 0 0.15 but in this case this will gonna consider everything zero because we don't have actual force we are not considering that in the calculation or per stress and all this multiplied by B, 0 0.35, multiplied by D. Of course, you can calculate all these home limits, as I say, although I calculate other limits. And this gives us 84. So I have the shear minimum and the shear resistance. And it will be the maximum between these two values. This is why there is this equation. To be in reality, the value that uh, we care about is the maximum between these two on the equation. And between 84 and 106, the maximum is 106. So the resistance we are considering is this one. And what we calculate for the shear, it was 308, the factory. 
308 and 308 is bigger than the VRDC so this is a KO that means that uh, uh, we will need to use links stirrups according to the euro code because that the equation that we are using euro code 2 6.22 for members not requiring reinforcement uh, is no good we will need the uh, scale since our sh shear calculated is bigger than the resistance okay so what we need to do we need to calculate the shear will be bigger uh, near to the supports so we need to calculate uh, we, we in this example we're gonna calculate the minimum minimum shear you can't uh, the, there will be no minimum shear than this one so the minimum that we could ever calculate it so this will be we'll call it VED mean minimum and this if we look here to the picture is this one VED here on the vertical and the euro code says that the cot of theta has to be on this calculation between 1 and 2.5 when is 2.5 is here on the minimum if we look here to this bridge standard where they use the BS 8110 we can see cota theta when is equal to 2.5 here in the lower this is related to where the crack will go so the more vertical this crack that we have here it is the value of cot of theta will be close to 1 but it can never pass 1 when it pass 1 this will practically collapse it will be the maximum shear it will collapse here close to the support so this is the relation and the minimum will be this distance will have this distance when cota theta is equal to 2.5 the distance will be 2.5 of z of the lever arm so is this one minimum minimum that is when cota theta is 2.5 it means it's in the angle of 22 if you look here on this bar this angle will be 22 and it can only go till 45 he can't pass 45 according to the code he, this is the way he found to limit it. okay moving on so we are gonna use the minimum of minimums that will be with a lever arm and uh, will be distance from the support 2.5 of Z so going there so we start by calculating this minimum VED that is equal to this equation it will be the VED the shear that we calculated less half of the support half it's this reaction half of the support that is in our case 0.4 half of this plus that distance from the support 2.5 of Z multiply all this by the factory load that is the UDL that we calculate in the ultimate limit state in the beginning when we subtract this we'll get the VED minimum and since we are using the distance of 2.5 to play by Z that's the minimum we will ever get uh, here 
of z this distance from the support so when we replace it there in the equation we get this value 171.25 kilonewtons because we know VED is 308.56 that we calculated 308 shift factor less the 0.4 of the support the wide out support divided by 2 plus 2.5 multiplied by Z that we have calculated this level arm and we are considered 0.543 we could always uh, in the later on I will explain another way to calculate this instead of using the minimum we will use um, a value between these two angles so then uh, it will be not this distance 2.5 uh, by the lever arm it will be less be an angle between them so in this way we get 171 <laughs> this is the minimum shear that we'll, we could get but Hero code gives this another equation for the concrete shear for minimum so they make a limit for this for this shear minimum that we can get and it is equal to 0 0.15 multiplied by the multiplied by the root of fck this give us um, so 0 0.15 multiplied by 0 0.35 multiplied by 0 0.60 the 0 0.62 Okay, root of FCK that is root of 32. Okay, here I multiply it by 1000 because I was putting the meters on millimeters. Okay, so this gives us 184.42. So the minimum that uh, the code allows us is 184, and we get 171. That was the minimum of minimum. That is less than this one. So since this is something established in the euro code, we have to use this value instead of this one because it is bigger. It's just a little bigger. So we have to use this one <coughs> for calculating the stirrups. So we should always provide a minimum amount of shear reinforcement on a beam. This is why Eurocode gives this equation. It gives this equation Eurocode because we need to provide a minimum amount of shear. And this was value even less than that one. So we have to adopt this one that is established. Okay, uh, this was what is important, but just for remembering uh, the maximum value of shear on the face of the support here, on the face of the support that can, that is here, on this face, E is given by a equation similar to the um, here on top that we calculated is this one is the shear that we calculated 308.56 factor shear less half of the support multiplied by the factor load <coughs> that was calculated here 88.16 okay And this uh, VED maximum here in the face of the support will give us 219. 
219.92. Later on, we'll come back to this value and we'll see a relation of another equation that the euro code gives us. And we'll check that the value is similar. So, okay, it, is this value for minimum shear that we can use? Okay, it's bigger than the one to calculate. If this VED minimum was bigger than this minimum, we could use this one. But on this scale, we have to use this one. So, what we can uh, get from here? We, for example, we could see the angle that is given in your code by this equation. We can see what is the angle, this theta, by curiosity. So, we just go here and we get these values on degrees 0 0.5, sino inverse. For the VED maximum is the this one of the support that we, we I show how to calculate this VED maximum is this one uh, take this X extra X here for okay so this VED is this one 290 Divided by V, multiplied by D, the FCK, FCK is 32, tada, give us 7.73 theta. This on degrees. So the X will give you the, this on degrees, you have to put it there or calculate it in the machine. 7.73 degrees. In radii will be 0 0.13 in the other of units. So, what uh, we can say from here? We can say that cota of theta bigger than 1 respect this condition. This cota of theta has to be between 2.5, that is in the lower part, and the superior part cota theta can be 1. So, when cota of theta is bigger than 2.5, bigger than 1, that's, it, it can never be smaller than 1, and uh, what we see, cot of, this is tangent, so when this, this cot of theta gives us 7.36, 7.36 is bigger than 1, so it's okay, and is uh, bigger than 2.5, so the angle is very, very short. And when that happens, and so this theta should be between 22 and 45 degrees. And is smaller than the 20, that is 21.8, 22 degrees. So since this is smaller, uh, smaller, what happens? We have to adopt according to the view code 2.5. We limit by there. So with the stirrups, we're gonna pull this to 2.5. That's what we're gonna do. Because cotta of that has to be between 1 and 2.5. We can force the lower part to go to 2.5. When is uh, on the top? It goes up the top of the cota of theta of 1, it goes less than 1. We have to redesign the beam, so we we'll have to change or the effective depth or, or the wide beam. We'll have to redesign it. In this case, we don't need it. We can push it to 2.5 because it's in the lower part here where the crack happened so this is less than 22 degrees we're gonna adopt 2.5 as so the theta will be 22 degrees so for this for the shear <coughs> we can start calculating the stirrups for that and uh, we have adopted stirrups of 8 in the beginning millimeters
and uh, <coughs> will are in the minimum shear we are using the minimum shear and for the minimum shear Dido code gives this equation the ratio minimum of the links or stirrups you can call it links or stirrups ASW divided by the spacing divided by B has to be less or equal to 0 0.08 root of FCK over FYK so this is the minimum ratio and from here so you can simply pass the spacing to one side and pass all the other equations 0 0.08 over the reinforcement of the, the links and we know this reinforcement of the links are diameters of 8 so the area on the table diameter of 8 in square centimeters is 0 0.50 0 0.50 so we know we just replace it there the equation will be this minimum equation will be this one spacing what we're gonna get from the knowing we are using stirrups or links of eight millimeters is this equation and uh, we know the diameter the area is 0.15 so but we know we need two legs on stirrups we have two legs so in one side and in the other one of diameter of eight so we multiply this two multiplied by the 0 0.50 the area of the section of the steel divided by 0 0.08 multiplied by can calculate all this on millimeters if you want the B that is 0 35 that is 350 millimeters um, multiplied by root of FCK that is uh, 32 divided by F YK okay from this there is a, another thing that we know we'll get a value we'll get a value and uh, this value will be 317 millimeters of spacing for stirrups of 8 so we are adopting this 317 because is the minimum when we calculate this spacing it will give us one value the spacing and we have in the euro code to limit it to 0 0.75 of D when we calculate 0 0.75 of D it gives us 0 0.465 that is 465 millimeters and here it gives us 317 so we have to use the minimum between the two we have on this limiter of the euro code 0 0.75 for spacing of stirrups by, by the effect of that give us this in this case this one is bigger than this one that we calculate for the minimum ratio of steel and we use it, this equation only in this specific case because we got here the value minimum on the beginning this one was smaller than this one this is why we went to the minimum ratio in the equation that's why otherwise we'll have use this other equation 
another video you can see me using this equation because we are more we have more than the minimum okay on this we get uh, so the minimum to use will be 317 millimeters of spacing for the diameter of 8 millimeters on the stirrups so it will be two legs we'll be using two legs of diameter of 8 millimeters spaced since it's 317 we adopt 30 cm why 30 cm there is a <coughs> advice i like to give that is if in another case it was like here uh, this one was uh, smaller than this spacing and uh, this one for example was uh, 500 and here 46 i would advise to maintain this spacing this spacing i would advise to maintain between values uh, of uh, 30 cm and 10 cm even if in the equation it says 10 cm uh, I'll advise to maintain this spacing between these for stirrups uh, even if in this equation the, in the code says you can use it 0.75d and in this other one so I'm taking the minimum spacing for the stirrups I'll advise to maintain it between these values because uh, most of the cases you, you will use uh, stirrups of uh, 6 millimeters and 8 millimeters can have some case you can use 12 millimeters but uh, the, so this will means you, you have a um, uh, bigger construction uh, big buildings bridges uh, to have stirrups of 12 or 16 diameter it means it will be bigger so this is uh, when it will be allowed maybe these spacings of 400 millimeters till the limit of 600 millimeters so for you can go from this the limit of steps 075 of d to 600 millimeters the limit but for normal calculations i advise you to limit to this 10 cm and 30 cm centimeters the spacing so okay in this case two legs of eight spaced by 30 cm so now we can sh simply check the vrd resistance maximum that in hero code you can have a more simplified way this equation you can quickly or speedy take this equation, replace here all the values, the theta, you know, you know the theta. Uh, let me put here on English signal. Okay, you know here the theta. Replacing these values all. The VRD maximum will give you 291.16 kilometers, the shear resistance maximum. And when we go see that uh, that we calculate on the face of the super here the maximum, the shear, if you remember here, you give us 290.92, that is basically 291. So it means the maximum shear is immediately close to the face of the support. This value is practically the other one. Okay, so this is the our limit, the resistance, and uh, what we calculated for the minimum was 184, the minimum. And in this case, we are calculating for the minimum minimum because this one was bigger than this one. Otherwise, we'll have to use this one as the minimum value. Since, 
that didn't happen this was bigger is the minimum ratio that we are using and is this value so VED minimum is 184 that is less than the maximum 291 and it's okay so how we design uh, this bin the VED minimum is less than VRD maximum the strength of concrete so will be sufficient and uh, you can put this diameter of face space by 30 and uh, you can extend the top uh, reinforcement all the way uh, with this minimum since it is the minimum shear you can put the stirrups all along the or all along as hangers here on the beam so and the distance is 2.5 of Z that is the lever arm when you replace this Z it gives us 135 so another way to calculate this that uh, it will be between is uh, between the putting the angle putting uh, uh, links uh, stirrups that uh, you can uh, reduce this value you can put it like uh, many codes and uh, even in bridge code they use the D the distance of D, the effective depth only, and that will make the angle go between that that cut of theta will be between 2.5 and 1, and that's fine. You can have this other type of angle. In another video, I'll show how to do this. Okay.